Previously, I went for maximizing my taxes. I squeezed every penny from my subjects, but left me wondering why. See, in EU4, you can make so much money from trade and production, you don't really need the pennies you get from taxing your subjects. Whenever I end up playing the EU4 game that gets late, we're talking past the 1700s, I wonder what would happen if I just stopped collecting taxes. I mean, frequently I am literally at the money cap itself, I do not need the money. This is of course in stark contrast to real life, where my addiction to both Paradox DLC as well as liquids containing 60% water in funny bottles have led to a crippling financial state. So crippling in fact, I'm going to ask you to not skip the following video. Okay, thanks for that. The pennies from the ad revenue will be invested into my 19% APR credit card I used to pre-order March of the Eagles. Before we begin to approach the question of abolishing taxation, I'm going to ask you to help me abolish my lack of self-esteem, which can be done by heading below the video and increasing the like counter and sub counter by one if you haven't already. But with all of that self shitting out of the way, let's consider the problem at hand. When it comes to getting to 0% tax, there's actually a couple things we have in terms of approaching it. Now, naturally, we don't want to do things like build churches or anything that increases tax. That is a given. However, before we just start the game on 0% tax and dismiss the entire problem inherently, there are a couple ways of collecting taxes that we can't avoid. The first comes from the fact that we get 25% taxes from a province being fully colonized, and then another 75% from having a core on the province. That means, in theory, if we were to never colonize a province, we avoid this initial 25%. However, by definition, our capital is always a full city. In fact, if we have one province remaining, our capital, and we are colonizing one province, and we lose our capital by an AI or a player taking it in a war, but keep our colony, our capital moves to the colony, which instantly finishes the colony. As such, we cannot avoid the 25% taxes on a global scale, since we will always have at least one fully colonized province, our capital. Now, having no cause in your territory is certainly an interesting strategy. One I will also be ignoring, since I want to have this done on a global empire and not having any cause literally anywhere, is going to be throwing the empire into such a state of chronic revolt, I'm pretty sure my peasants would start voluntarily paying into the government tax pool just to avoid being drafted into the doomed peasant revolt 378. Of course, the previous 377 peasant revolts have failed, but this time it's going to be different, trust me. So how do we go about getting rid of the plus 100% taxes? Well, this is where the previous theories, our previous options come into play. The first thing that comes into mind is actually autonomy. At 100% autonomy, among other things, we also decrease the amount of taxation we get from our territories by, well, 100%. Now, giving our territories literally 100% autonomy from the government so we don't tax them is already causing libertarians in the US to be having a field day, and I believe just saying the phrase is enough to get Ron Swanson to try and adopt me. This does, however, quickly run into issues. The the reason we aren't taxing in the first place is the fact that we have too much money. The, the reason we aren't taxing in the first place is the fact that, well, we make too much money from production and trade. Now, it is possible to keep 100% autonomy everywhere, believe me, but it does also just nuke your production and tax income down to zero. That's not the end of the world and would technically complete the challenge apart from one more issue. Namely, our capital again becomes problem, see our capital has this magical property of always having no autonomy. Much like the US capital in Washington DC is able to maintain itself on no autonomy. And, and I'm, and, uh, that's actually the only example I can think of. Wow, the US is coming up a lot in a video about not paying taxes. I do wonder why. Anyway, moving swiftly on, the existence of the capital guarantees us an existence of a zero autonomy province which does prevent us running a 100 autonomy everywhere as a valid solution to preventing national taxation, as we will always be taxing our capital. Now, the next thing that comes to mind is actually going to be occupation. See, while occupied, you don't get any money, or anything else for that matter, from the province in question. The person who's occupying it does. And furthermore, while under occupation, it decreases the tax rate by 50% for the occupier. This means, in theory, we could have our country chronically occupied all the time, which means we'll never tax anyone. 
This genius theory runs into two issues very quickly. The first one is that well, you need to be full occupied. This means that if you're doing this through the AI, the AI will piece you out at that point, taking some money and a bit of your land. At which point you will need to go find a new AI who will fully occupy again. Meaning you will get fully occupied, sure, until the AI pieces you out for land and money again. If you run this strategy, not only does it have a terrible uptime since your full occupation will last days at most, it will also lead to you losing your country. Literally. Now let's say you do this in multiplayer and get someone else to full occupy you to not pay taxes. Firstly, your friend is going to have a chronic call for peace, as well as not being able to do estate interactions or form countries and any other things that requires them being at peace, since you know they will always be at war. Furthermore, the other issue that the plan runs into is the same as the problem with the autonomy plan. We'll just have significantly reduced production and trade income too, so also we'll just run out of money in the process. So we actually need a method of nuking our tax income that does minimal damage on our country in the process. And being full occupied all the time just isn't it. The devastation will also tick up on the side, which will really hurt our production and tax income if being fully occupied didn't already. So with all of that said, how can we achieve the minus 100% or more tax reduction while still leaving the production efficiency and goods produced and manpower pools of our country at least relatively untouched? Well, it's time to get into the actual modifier stacking part of the video. As always, the usual stuff applies. We're running Iron Man compatibility, achievement compatibility, and no cast of nations in our setup. But with all that said and done, let's go. Now, before we get anywhere, I'm going to need to address the greedy trait. Now, it will certainly help us decreasing our taxes by 10%. However, there's actually other ways of getting our taxation down to minus 100% that we'll be using instead of the greedy trait, which is reliably more permanent than the greedy trait itself. So while I would take it as a valid solution if I didn't have other solutions, I will be not accepting as a solution as it were, and using other solutions for it, hence ignoring the greedy trait for our, well, tax reduction. Now, the first thing we need to do become is actually a theocracy. See, theocracies have this mechanical devotion, where as you can see here at 100, it provides us with 25 national tax modifier, which is pretty neat. However, once our devotion hits zero, we will actually lose 25% national tax modify, knocking us down from 100% nat tax down to just 75. And this is something we can maintain permanently since devotion quite thankfully just takes down on its own. So just don't be devoted, be a theocracy where you reject God. Next, it's time to talk about estates and crown land. Two things come into play here. First of all, the nobility. The increased levies perk for the nobility scales with the amount of crown land the nobility has. And if the nobility has 100% crown land, it will provide you 100% more national manpower at the cost of 20% of your taxes. So we'll need to get rid of all of our crown land and gain ourselves this modifier here, giving it all to the uh, nobility so that they can, you know, increase their levies and get us minus 20% national tax, decre decreasing us into a much more substantial 45% overall reduction, putting our tax rate at 55%. An incredibly helpful side effect with the nobility running literally all of your crown land is of course that having zero crown land decreases your national tax modifier by another further 20%. Me at the moment, just by being a theocracy with no devotion and the nobility owning literally everything to draft the peasants, we've reduced our taxes by an incredible 65% already, leaving us with just 35% to get. This is also where the burghers come in. See, we may not be big fans of Jesus or whatever our theocratic focus is, but we are big fans of the arts. And if we become a patron of them, we'll get minus 5 national tax, taking us down to minus 30% tax remaining or minus 70% taxes. And here we encounter difficulties. While all of the things so far mentioned don't actually increase your, well, decrease your production from goods or trade, the following actions are going to have negatives in either our manpower pool or our production efficiency and goods produced pool. We need to get rid of 30% taxes and there's two ways of approaching this. So here I've integrated FARS to demonstrate the effects of not having an accepted culture. As you can see that decreases your local tax rate by 33%. So if we have our primary culture be something like Greek, we can theoretically get rid of all of the Greek and other provinces inside that culture group and culture convert them all away into something like Bulgarian or Turkish or whatever you feel like. Meaning that all the provinces will actually have that minus 33% tax debuff. This does however come with consequences. Namely, our manpower pools will also suffer by 33%. This, however, does not affect our goods produced or production efficiency or trade efficiency in any way. So if you're optimizing purely for money without taxation, not accepted cultures are the way to go. 
Another solution is using hedons. See, the default value of your tolerance of hedons is going to be minus 3, which is perfect because that decreases your loyalty taxes by 30%. Just make sure you never gain any torrents of heathens and make sure heathens run literally your entire country. The conversion part can be done with rebels, spawn religious zealots and let them siege all of your non-heathen lands to convert them into the heathen religion in question. This will, however, preserve your manpower pools, since it will mean that just because you're a heathen doesn't mean you can't serve in the army, unlike the different culture thing. But this will give you rather substantial local goods produced modifier of minus 30. So it's the thing that you have to wonder here. Would you rather have minus 33% national manpower or minus 30% goods produced. The choice truly is yours on this one, but it's one of these two modifiers that you are going to have to pick up if you want to abolish taxes inside of your country. But there we go, by becoming a godless theocracy with uh, the nobles running the entire show, you can become an entirely tax-free environment, which somehow sounds incredibly horrific, but that's just the universe we're setting up here. So there you have it. If you do all that, you will have offset or base taxes. You will achieve the true dream and live in a tax-free society. Famous real societies like Monaco, and Bermuda, and the Cayman Islands, and Vanuatu, Vanu Vanuatu, Venice. Oh, and the Bahamas, of course. Why are all the non-taxing societies OPMs? Oh well, I'm sure there's nothing to it. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.